Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alexandra and I make videos all about thrifting, home decor, and DIYs. So if those are some things that you're interested in, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button below so you don't miss the next video. Today I will be sharing with you three different ways that you can create textured vases. I've seen this trend all over Instagram and I wanted to hop on the bandwagon and show you my version of these DIYs. If you're here for it, follow along and let's get started. Our first DIY is a baking soda aged piece of pottery and I was inspired by some pieces that I saw on Restoration Hardware. As you can imagine, these vases are a crazy price and I thought that I could recreate these from versions that I saw both on Instagram and Pinterest using acrylic paint and baking soda. So those are the supplies that you see here. All you need is a vase that you want to flip. I got this one at a thrift store on my last trip. A sponge brush, some baking soda, and some acrylic paint. I'm using a mix of white paint and brown paint but of course you can use whatever you choose so you're gonna start off by getting a jar to mix both the baking soda and paint I just eyeballed this I didn't go by a specific ratio so I just basically waited until there were bubbles forming from the concoction and that it was a thickness that I liked personally but it really is entirely up to you basically I started coating the base with the sponge brush just dabbing along as I went to create more of that texture and this base took about three coats just because it was a dark brown to start as I was going I started implementing more of the brown just to add that aged effect so I dabbed a little bit more brown in some spots and left some spots more white there's no right or wrong here so really just have fun with it The finished result is a beautifully patchy, uneven looking vase that looks very raw and unfinished and is really part of this style. I never thought I would say that uneven and patchy are positives, but in this case, it really does work and adds to that aged effect. I'm really pleased with this. It's now sitting on my sideboard in my dining room and you could totally add some dried flowers, dried plants in here to really amp up the look. Our second DIY is this two-toned brush stroke vase. I came across this particular one from Pottery Barn and I thought it was just so beautiful. I loved the way the brown and the white mixed so well together. So again, I got a base at a thrift store. This one just wasn't really my style. So I started off by spray painting it this brown color using a Rust-Oleum spray paint. And you'll see that the spray paint actually stuck to the parchment paper that I used. So don't use parchment paper if you're doing this DIY. Learn from my mistakes was kind of a spray paint fail but that's okay because we are using brush stroke technique on both the bottom and the top of the vase so any patchiness from the spray paint will completely be masked by the acrylic paint that we use there's always a way to fix a DIY fail and trust me this is a lot of trial and error DIYing is all about figuring it out as you go and figuring it out until you get it. So afterwards I took some of the same brown acrylic paint and some of the same white that I used earlier and I mixed them until I could get the color that I liked and I basically just created these uneven brush strokes all along the bottom and all along the top. I kind of wanted to create 
create a mountain effect. So of course the planes are gonna be different heights, different sizes. And I think I also did about three coats of this. And the color that it actually dried into turned out to be a little bit more rosy, but I, I really, really did end up liking that. And here you can see it on a wall shelf that I styled with a few plants from Ikea. I absolutely love this. I love the shape of it. I knew that I wanted to transform it right away. And that's the beauty of getting vases from the thrift store. You can truly make them the way that you want, just with a little bit of paint. Our final and third DIY is a copycat earthenware base with some horizontal lines all around it. I found this particular vase that I was inspired by from West Elm. It has, again, those lines all around it, those lines that are created by actual pottery. But of course, the vase that I ended up using was thrifted and it had some stripes on it already, some of those indentations. Now, if you don't have a vase that already has that detail, you can easily still use the technique that I'm using just to create the effect on the eye. Or, if you'd like, you can actually cover the vase with clay and create some of those crevices yourself by using a knife. So that's something that you can definitely explore. But because I already had them, I just basically follow the lines with the paint. Again, I'm using the same brown and white paint mixture and I'm just going for it with a regular paintbrush, following the lines back and forth until I got the effect that I like. I added more paint, probably about three coats, until I enjoyed the effect. And what's cool about this effect is you can actually add paint as you go, as opposed to mixing it. Just add it directly to the vase and let it go inside those indentations so that it's not completely mixed with the other color see all of the colors kind of come alive throughout. Here is the finished look. I added some faux lavender in there from the dollar store, of course, and I put it on my mantle. I think it really brightens up the room. I love that aged effect again. All of these, in my opinion, look quite expensive. They don't look like DIYs, and you can get them at some of these high-end stores, but why not just make it yourself? So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed some of these DIYs and if you try to attempt them, please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, bye for now.